There he goes. He's just removing boxes and boxes of stuff, putting it in a garbage bag and heading for the door. No problem. Catch you later, gang. People on the left were basically like, well, this is the cry of the oppressed. Well, except for how it's not the cry of the oppressed. It is crime. Rocketing around the Internet was a video from a Walgreens in San Francisco. And for folks who have visited any of our major cities over the course of the last few years, there's a pretty obvious uptick in property crime. Not just an obvious uptick in property crime, a complete downturn in quality of life. There's a reason that people have been fleeing big cities in favor of more outlying red areas or blue cities in red states. Okay, San Francisco has been turned from a gem, a very clean and safe city, into something really quite awful. Over the past few years, you've seen reports of feces, human feces on nearly every corner, open needles on nearly every corner. In Los Angeles, the homeless problem is so unbelievably bad that it has now invaded the suburbs. You have people who are mentally ill or drug addicts who are basically sleeping on the curbs outside people's homes in Los Angeles. This was happening outside my home in a fairly nice suburb of Los Angeles, one of the reasons we moved. The same thing has happened in Seattle. It used to be called the Emerald City, now it's the Brown City for all the poop that is in public. And well, one of the things that has upticked in the recent years has been obviously low-level crime. Now, people on the left like to pretend that low-level crime isn't actually crime. It's just the cry of the oppressed, right? If somebody is shoplifting, it's because poverty is such an endemic problem in American capitalistic society. It's not a problem of morality. It's not a problem of decency. It's a problem of poverty, except that when we see film of people actually engaging in crime, it generally is not people stealing the necessities of life just to get by. More often, it looks like something like this. So here is the video from Walgreens. You're about to see a young black man. I point out his race here only because, as we will see, San Francisco has decided that they do not wish people to know the race of the people who are engaging in crime because they want to avoid, quote unquote, stereotyping. This ties into the whole Black Lives Matter argument that if there is disproportionate arrest of particular people, that is not because disproportionate crime is being committed by particular people. It is because of racism inside the system. In any case, it's a young black man who is at a Walgreens and he is just literally shoveling stuff. He, he looks like he is in the uh, in the soap and pharmacy aisle. He's, he's literally just shoveling stuff into a garbage bag. Okay, and his bike is right there. His bike is sitting next to him. And you're about to see him shovel stuff into this bag and then just take off. There he goes. He's just removing boxes and boxes of stuff, putting it in a garbage bag, hopping on his bike and heading for the door. You see there's a security guy there. The security guy sort of Puts out a limp hand to try and grab the garbage bag. Nothing. And there he goes, just right out the door. No problem. Catch you later, gang. Okay, well, people on the left were basically like, well, this is the cry of the oppressed. If you looked at the blue checks on the left on Twitter, this is the cry of the oppressed. Well, except for how it's not the cry of the oppressed. It is crime. And crime is generally not. The, the, the attempt by the left to suggest that poverty is the great driver of crime ignores the fact that there are impoverished places on earth where people do not engage in crime at nearly the levels that people are engaging in crime, property crime in San Francisco. For example, there are impoverished areas of the United States where people are not engaging in this sort of crime at the same sort of levels. Crime tends to be a problem of people who are, who are committing immoral acts, especially in a prosperous country like the United States with a robust social safety net. There's a, to, to kind of thrust this off as this is just the downside of the American system. It's just the downside of the American system of capitalism. Of, of our white supremacist system is ridiculous on its face. Okay, here's how bad the problem has become in San Francisco. Again, one of the most left-leaning cities in all of America. It's become so bad that 17 Walgreens, and this happened at Walgreens, 17 separate Walgreens have closed in San Francisco thanks to the shoplifting problem. In late May, a guy named Thomas Fuller wrote in the New York Times, quote, at a board of supervisors hearing last week, Representatives from Walgreens said that thefts at its stores in San Francisco were four times the chain's at national average and that it had closed 17 stores, largely because the scale of thefts had made business untenable. So the narrative that you hear from the left, of course, is this is all systemic racism and that's the reason for the crime. And, and then you see stores like Walgreens and they're not being built in, in high crime, low income areas. And isn't that more systemic racism? And the answer is when you allow crime to prevail, stores don't move in. They undercut the tax base. They make life worse. People don't have places to go. Crime is a terrible thing. And if you wish to make life better for everybody in a community, you have to stop the crime at its source. 
Unfortunately, San Francisco and blue cities like it are not interested in stopping crime at its source. They are more interested in blaming America writ large for their own unwillingness to stop the crime that is happening within their borders. Employees at Walgreens apparently have been told by the leadership of Walgreens to stand aside while shoplifting takes place. Like you're wondering when you watch that video, why isn't that security guard doing something to stop that guy? Like what's his job actually? It turns out his job is basically to supervise the shoplifting because Walgreens have been told, Walgreens employees have been told by their supervisors to stand aside because security officers have been assaulted repeatedly inside Walgreens. Now, the reason for all of this, particularly with regard to shoplifting, is because of a 2014 California ballot measure. Hey, that ballot measure reclassified nonviolent theft as a misdemeanor, so long as the thief took less than 950 bucks worth of material. So you just hit up several Walgreens in a row and you take less than 950 bucks worth of material and you're fine. Even if you get arrested, you'll get off with a slap on the wrist. You'll go right back out on the street. Thieves quickly hit on the strategy, hit up a bunch of different stores for less than 950 bucks worth of stuff. Hey, then last year, amid the Black Lives Matter protest, suggesting again that all crime in the United States was truly due to systemic American racism and that the police were the real problem. Amid that ridiculous notion, the city of San Francisco decided to double down on its soft on crime policies. Mayor London Breed announced that booking photos would no longer be released lest the prevalence of black and brown faces among the booking photos lead to stereotypical reactions inside stores. I shouldn't want to lead to racial profiling, so instead what we will do is we'll just obscure who exactly is committing the crime. That way, if a disproportionate number of black and brown people are arrested because a disproportionate number of black and brown people actually happen to be committing these sorts of shoplifting crimes in San Francisco, that must mean that the police are racist. And you'll never know any different because we've never seen the booking photos in the first place. Also, London Breed announced a $120 million cut to the police and sheriff's department over the next two years in the interest of, quote, prioritizing investments in the African-American community. In the first six months of 2020 alone, 23 officers resigned from the force. Naturally, property crime has skyrocketed, and it's not just shoplifting. Burglaries increased nearly 50% year on year in 2020 in San Francisco. Car theft jumped 34% in San Francisco. Meanwhile, of course, San Francisco has been a in a, slow, uh, a state of slow motion decline for the past several years. The streets are littered with garbage. In 2018, there was a survey of 153 blocks in downtown San Francisco. It showed trash, like open trash out on every single block, 41 blocks, quote, dotted with needles, and 96 blocks of the 153 blocks, 96 with open human feces. And again, this sort of stuff is not rare in major cities around the United States. As I mentioned, Los Angeles, the quality of life has become truly awful. The, the slogan for, for, the, uh, for the Herbert Hoover campaign in 1932 is a chicken in every pot. The slogan in Los Angeles is a homeless person on every bench and presumably on your driveway as well. And again, that is not compassion toward the homeless. Treating men se- severely mentally ill people and drug addicts as though they have a right to sleep on the street and use open needles in front of your children is not compassion to either the children or to the homeless people. San Francisco, by the way, is now facing its worst drug epidemic ever, according to Amy Graff, of the San Francisco Chronicle. She says, a physician, two nurses, a professional athlete, a drug dealer, and a lawyer who had nodded off in court, teenagers, specifically a 14 and a 15-year-old, and a seven-year-old who got into a stash in her mother's purse. These are some of the types of people Dr. Christopher Caldwell, the chief of emergency medicine at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital, has recently seen in the emergency room for medical issues related to fentanyl use and overdoses, a seven-year-old who got into a stash in her mother's purse. But apparently it's all about white supremacy, gang. Caldwell said, That's just in the last couple of weeks. It's really remarkable because it runs the entire spectrum. This affects all walks of life, all folks. It's hard to overstate how impactful it can be to anyone. It doesn't seem to care about race or background or gender or anything. Caldwell said on average, about 10 to 15 people who have taken fentanyl are treated in the San Francisco general emergency room a day, sometimes more. And that's at just one hospital in the city. So San Francisco, which is famous for being a drug haven, has been for decades, is now experiencing its worst drug upsurge ever, according to the San Francisco Chronicle. And meanwhile, in New York, massive outbreaks on, on subway cars of filth and feces, apparently, is according to Fox New York. As people return to the subway system in New York City, they're finding more trash and filth, according to a new report. There's been a rise in soiled train cars this year, according to the Daily News, including cases of feces, vomit, and blood. The paper cited internal MTA reports. An increase in used syringes is being found amid growing drug use in the subway system. MTA spokesperson Andre Berman said, quote, incidents like this are unfortunate. They're unsanitary for our customers, deeply unfair, disturbing for transit cleaners. They're also a reminder of the need for more mental health outreach and social service support in the city and throughout the system. Rising crime in the subway system is also 
a problem. Last month, Governor Andrew Cuomo said people just don't feel safe riding the trains. They have to feel safe. Do they feel safe now? No, Cuomo said at a news conference. The governor said there needed to be more NYPD officers in the subway system. All of which is why, according to a new study from the North American Moving Services, the top outbound states for people who are leaving states in America, Illinois, New York, California, New Jersey, and Maryland. The top inbound states, Idaho, Arizona, South Carolina, Tennessee, and North Carolina. You notice a sort of political theme there? Every single state from which people are leaving is heavily blue. Every single state to which people are going is red or purple at best. I know what you're thinking. It's time to binge some more Ben Shapiro videos. Well, you are right. You should. But first, like and subscribe. Perfect. I'll see you in the next video.